Hey, I, hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, or good night from wherever you are in the world. We are here today with a very, very special guest to me as a former OZIN, now slash academic, to see other people doing the same work and an amazing work in the academic uh, area is so satisfying. Uh, and yeah, I'm Ines Narciso at Twitter, IWN underscore LX, and I'll give it over to you, Laurent, to introduce our guest. Thanks, Ines, and uh, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in, and also thanks to our listeners who are now listening to this podcast. I'm also very excited because uh, we have a very, very special guest today, and we're going to talk a lot about not really OSINT, but still OSINT. Uh, we're going to talk about social media research methods, so stuff that we can also use in OSINT, and without further ado, let me introduce our guest today. So our guest is uh, Jana. Uh, she is a research fellow at the Center for Advanced Internet Studies in Bochum, Germany, where she's working on a project about computer vision networks, where they are basically developing digital visual methods for social and medium research. So you have to explain uh, to us like what this is, because uh, it sounds very interesting and uh, also super useful for some of the use cases I can just think of. And uh, Jana, she's also a researcher associated with Inova Media Lab, where she founded and coordinates the Smart Data Sprint, Digital Media Winter Institute, and the group uh, Social Media Research Techniques, also called SMART. So Jana, first of all, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Ines. Thank you, Lorendo. I mean, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, very flattered by this invitation, and I hope um yeah we have like some fun and this conversation uh can be also like helpful for those who are hearing <laughs> Ab absolutely so usually the one of the first questions we always ask our guests is tell us your story how did you get into OSINT but because your background is different it's still the same thing you're gonna find out and we're gonna talk about this so the first question would be how did you get into the kind of work that you're doing now, especially um, at the uh, Center for Advanced Internet Studies, where you work on this project about computer vision networks and where you develop these digital visual methods? Maybe you can tell us a little bit about your story and then dive into what you're doing in this project. Yeah, OK, nice, great. Oh, I'd say that this story started like a more than 10 years ago when I was in Brazil, because I'm Brazilian and half Portuguese. Um, and I always interested in this environment uh, uh, called internet. <laughs> so I, I did some some work uh, when I was younger uh, to a school about communication, and uh, we did like this project with the students. Uh, so we did a lot of content to the to the internet site of the school. So this was my first contact uh, um, ages ago. And then uh, before I came to Portugal, uh, which was more or less eight years ago, um, I came here to my master's. So I wanted to do something different, right? I wanted to start something different. And then I found out uh, this kind of field, which is right now is very trend, right? Uh, the, the digital methods approach to research. But at the time it wasn't. And then I tracked back the work of Bernard Reeder, uh, the, the researchers who, who built the NetVis tool. Oh. And this was before I start my master's. And then I just figured out that I was kind of, oh my gosh, this is so interesting. So the questions of how can we study with the web? How can we study with social media and, and data coming from. And so I was uh, kind of very, very fascinated with all these possibilities. And this is how I get to know uh, the, and the digital methods. And then I did my master's on this field, my PhD, which is almost done. And uh, all this process, right, um, bring me here to Kaij, 
let's say what I'm doing at Kais, it's a follow up of all lots of projects that I mm -hmm. have already started uh, years ago about using computer vision, right? But I didn't realize that I had so many projects uh, about computer vision only when I was mm -hmm. writing my thesis. <laughs> and yeah. then, oh, I'm using a lot of computer vision and so on. I've done a lot on that. And then, um, yeah, I submitted a project, right, to, to, to be a research fellow at KAIS last year um, to kind of develop this, this topic, uh, mm -hmm. which, as you said, it's kind of interesting and it's not that difficult. It's to summarize, uh, it is to use computer vision to study large collections of images through networks. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a process that uh, requires a lot from the researcher uh, in terms of engaging with technical practices and also um, kind of minimal technical background mm -hmm. on, yes, on, on using tools, right? And using software. I don't know if I yeah. was able to <laughs> yeah, try it. Absolutely. I mean, honestly, I have so many questions, um, mm -hmm. but let's take them one by one. So first of all, with the digital methods, um, you know, we, we discussed it uh, earlier before we even re started uh, recording the interview, but you know, we discussed it also in a previous episode, the overlap or the differences and commonalities between, you know, OSINT as a distinct intelligence discipline, and then on the other hand, academia, and then researchers who are using publicly available information to study social issues or phenomena. And there are lots of commonalities and also overlaps. And at the end of the day, you're also trying to understand something or answer a question. And that's the same what people try to do with or in OSINT uh, as well. So coming back to the digital methods, um, can you tell us a little bit about um, the kind of projects you worked on or you know, a couple of use cases on uh, where you use these uh, digital methods? Um, to to study something like, or maybe even the current project. Um, you mentioned computer vision, but let's tackle this in another question. Like, yeah, um, okay, so many projects, but um, let me mention uh, the project that I'm engaging this week. So this week, mm -hmm. that's why I didn't have uh, the time to prepare properly myself to the question. <laughs> you don't have to prepare, it's fine. Because because I was invited to um, to co-facilitate a project at the Digital Method Summer School. So for instance, so this is an ongoing project about deep fakes, not detecting deep fakes, but trying to understand the issues uh, surrounding deep fakes and deep fakes as, as a matter of concern. But this project wants to do that using images. So, uh, and then we use digital methods, right? To, to respond a series of questions uh, concerning uh, deep fakes, not in a sense of detection, but in a sense of mapping issue, of mapping uh, matters of concern, uh, using um, public available data, in this case, hashtagged content, right? Hashtagged by deep fake or deep fakes on Twitter and Google. And on Google is like an overtime uh, perspective, like goes back in time five years. They, they were able to extract those that data, yeah. And the results I don't know yet. <laughs> yeah, can I just uh, quickly interrupt? So you sure. mean you you collect those deep fakes using these hashtags deep fake or deep fake and many probably many others images, and then you yes. try and then you try to map out so let's say you start collecting today and you find five tomorrow you find 10 you go back in history and then you try to map out how these deep fakes evolve and maybe look at also characteristics of in terms of the nature of how they evolve is this the case or in the network right yeah, I mean, we are doing that different because the, the the goal of this project, for instance, it's not only map um, the issues related to deep fakes through images, 
Mm -hmm. uh, but also experiment and, and create visual methodologies. So uh, we're going for the both uh, ways. But I, I, can, I can also tell you a very, uh, not using a project approach, but how can we use digital methods like, I mean, for society, for instance, yeah. uh, um, for instance, public institutions and organizations are very much interested right in in knowing about themselves uh as an institution mm -hmm. uh, within the web environment and the conversations related to them as, as an institution or maybe like um uh, social problems like for instance we had uh, um, a few years ago people from come from brazil from the few cruise um, institution there, it's a health institution, and they were very concerned about Brazilians and how Brazilians uh, were coping at the time the problems of the Zika vi virus, mm -hmm. and uh, and how the families were yeah dealing with the impact of uh, the virus. I mean the the babies with the microcephaly. And in that case, it was mapping conversations, right? Uh, or, or mapping issues. So mm -hmm. in, in a sense, I'd say that the social, <laughs> uh, what's the word in English, um, purpose <laughs> of digital methods, in a sense, can be um, that back to society is like mapping issues, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe, help in some ways either to provide either to to take some um uh um how do you say uh take some management or doing things about it right? mm -hmm. policies yes 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 <laughs> Jana, you were you were speaking about uh, NetViz, for example. For those of us who are viewing or listening, us NetViz was an amazing, amazing tool. Um, yeah, Facebook I think went down first, and then the YouTube. I think still is it still working the YouTube tool? Um, it is right. It's really interesting because it allows you to map once you have one video, which other videos are suggested. And it clearly creates like a network of videos that you can build from, for example. So if you are studying, for example, disinformation or a certain social, um, yeah, a, cer a, a certain social uh, phenomena, you can see how it flows in in the in the in in YouTube through suggestions and how like that network grows for like the regular viewer. Just be minded that it may like um, give you not related directly, but it's the algorithm of YouTube working. So, but but NetViz is, was for Facebook, for example, an amazing tool. And this would be one of my questions, which is for like either as an OSINT researcher or as an academic, I've felt that access to data has, like it was going pretty well, and then in 2000, yeah, following Cambridge Analytica, 2018, 19, it had like it was gone, and we were kind of all panicking. But then suddenly, like there are bad things that bring up good things, which was the pandemic, and I think COVID kind of spooked social media, and they are all a little bit more again, trying to give us some access because they know this is a, a problem that yeah needs to be tackled with everyone, every hand on board. But I was wondering like, what's your feel on the development of like access to social media data? What, how, how do you feel about like scraping data? Because like OSIN people, most of us will, will scrape data, but some academic researchers do to like, legal concerns with the universities will be more cautious about this how how do you feel about this access to data issue yeah um first related to the um, to the access to data as you said very well since the cambridge analytica right uh, there was this uh, post api scenario in so we were so used to to access 
big, big, big data sets using uh, social media APIs. And in a sense, I think it was kind of good uh, because maybe it just uh, shift our attention and shift our perspective, not only to care about quantity of data, um, because there is flows of data every day. I mean, and maybe force uh, at least researchers um, to to better reflect on why they need data, to what purpose, and do I need such big collections of data to to you know to address uh, my my research problems, or, or to maybe to work in collaboration with uh, uh, public institutions uh, uh, and, and to do other types of research problems. So. I think somehow this kind of um, is a, a, a wake call uh, for mm. a change of attitude and a, a shift of of mind, right? In in, in terms of uh, this urgency of having data, 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 and um, this is one thing. What what was the other? It was about like scraping and, and scraping. Um, I particularly have no uh, problems about scraping, but it's also important to point that we have this sense of research ethics, right? Because when you use digital methods, you do have a kind of different parameters right about research ethics than traditional research for instance you cannot ask the consent of the users that you you are either retrieving from apis or either scraping uh, so and there is these these yes um uh, concern about always being ethical right when you need to uh, scrape data and of course in case, for instance, your research may expose sensitive content or may expose um, ordinary users, right? Not talking about public um, public figures. So it's it's on us to 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 not expose them, right? Um, so yeah, and. Um when you when you're because you're also teaching right when 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 you have not your... this semester not this semester but I, I taught i taught um two months this year at king's college yeah but right okay. now i'm not teaching but when you're teaching like when your students um come with a challenge like that you know that there's like no tool that can do that uh, how do you what what because in what we feel in Ozen very often is that what what makes tools appear because someone needs them so someone will have a challenge and will need some data from a place or will need to find something out and they will try to find and build a tool that will go around it and will do it uh, so, and I was wondering if like, what would be your advice is to like young students that are listening now and or even like, older people, but they they want to go into research. They want to go through to digital methods. What are like the main challenges um, right now? What what are your advices when someone comes? Because my students very often at each they come with like something. They have this idea and I, I, I don't want to tell them to quit, but I know it's going to be a very difficult road. Yeah, I think the big challenge, it's uh, for me, it's uh, again, a shift of mindset because uh, when you use digital methods, you do need to realize that practice sometimes comes first. Uh, and, and all these um, conceptual and, and ideas and that you may have about something um, that's good, you 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 always need to question about you always need to bring new ideas right but for me the challenge is first to realize that you need to practice second that you need to expand time learning about the mediums that are going to work with you 
right? And, and not only the platforms, right? Because we 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 use the web environment to as source uh, and platforms, and then you need to get to know these environment that you are dealing with. And at the same time, you also get to know the tools and they're going to work with you, especially when they add an extra layer of uh, meaning, right? For instance, uh, you may use Gephi, right? So Gephi adds extra layers of meaning to your content. Mm -hmm. um, so, and as the same way that computer vision API APIs, when you use them, right, and then they label images to you. So this for me, it's the the, the biggest challenge. And uh, and if the teachers like kind of uh, prepare the students to that, um, I think, yeah, things can go smoothly and well. And, you know, you, you mentioned uh, Ines mentioned it as well, uh, the, the scraping issue. I wanted to just ask about it again. Um, but you talked about data, that you don't necessarily need lots of lots of data, which I agree with. I mean, at the end of the day, it really depends on the kind of like research design of what you want to answer, the sample, uh, the sample size. Um, if you want to make some, you know, uh, you want to infer something about the general population, is it enough or not? But this is one thing that I really like about you know, this is where we go back to OSINT is you have to ask uh, to answer or find something specific. And then the challenge is um, you can't use this traditional method, find something else, and then to be creative about it and say, hey, you know what, let me try something else. Okay, so I can't use Facebook, but what if that person, um, you know, I know that uh, she likes to play chess. Maybe we can find, you know, something in the chess forum and then suddenly it opens the door to the data you were after or something. Um, this is what I like about this. Is Can you tell us something about like how you deal with these issues of um, you kind of like, ideally you would need a lot of data, but you still try something else because it's the, the way forward um, in that case. Yeah, this question is kind of tricky, tricky for me and complicated because I've never wanted too much data. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, because, <laughs> so it is kind of tricky because I mean, um, everything that I've done so far, it's uh, pretty much situated in a context, mm. right? In, in, uh, in very specific and uh, achievable. Um, then let me rephrase. Uh, yeah, when do you please, say, please. I, when do you say like, okay, that's enough. I have enough data. Oh, I understood. I understood. I understood. I mm understood. -mm. Okay, uh, what I do, right? This is like some, it's not It's not a rule uh, yet, right? Because these methods are still standardizing, but my practice is um, in the process of query design and data mm -hmm. extraction and data exploratory visualizations, right? So I, I I research the environment that I want to, to approach. So I came up with a query design that I think that can be enough. I test mm. it. I try out um, exploratory visualizations. Um, I get a sense of the data that I that I get, right? Mm. Um, to try to, to understand, yeah, a, a little bit about the, the results. And then, depending on on that, I may find out a new ways or new keywords or new entry points to improve my sample, in a sense. Mm -hmm. And then I would do that. And then, okay, I decided oh, this is the sample, right? I don't know if if I could be kind of clear, but it's not one way trial. Right yeah. for me, data extraction it's not okay. Let's use deep, let's use deep fakes and extract data. Mm. And uh, I just wanted to mention to our listeners, um, especially those who work in like in an academic context, um, Twitter has I think this was a couple of months ago they introduced a new API and True. which is specifically for academic research product track, 
And with this product track, so academics have access, so you have to apply, but you will get access to more tweets and even historical data. So in terms of data volume, um, I don't know exactly the cap, uh, what the limit is right now for a month, but with the academic track, you can get up to 10 million tweets a month. <laughs> and there are also a lot of other things as well, which is pretty beneficial. And I remember when I was using Twitter for some, some research, it was just a public API, but it still gave you a lot of um, a lot of data to work with, but I guess this one for academics is pretty pretty cool. Um, I don't know if you need ten million tweets. Would be nice. <laughs> Maybe you need, but how how can you analyze that, right? Uh, yeah, that's how next can you, thing. Um, because yeah, uh, that's also the the problem of trying to to. I mean, I, I'd say for students and for ordinary researchers who who do not have a kind of uh, the infrastructure like computing in, mm -hmm. in their labs which is the reality of the majority of the at least not i'm not talking about them from computing or, or computational sciences or computational uh, engineer right talking about uh, social scientists digital sociologists so many of them um, there is also these limitations about mm -hmm. i can get 10 million they millions of tweets but how how can i run in my mm -hmm. lab or my or my computer so it's another let's say it, it's a big data research right uh, and i don't um i don't do big data research yeah but i think this is this is something uh, you touch up on i see also as very important like in our field like I know uh, I know things about you know my area, but I don't know everything. Of course, uh, it's impossible. So collaboration is key, and I know people who are really good, you know, highly skilled at geolocation, highly skilled at this. So I think uh, the collaboration is also important in the digital methods, social research field. Right, having those experts working only with big data, and then those who you know analyze it and make the, these these conclusions. True. I couldn't agree more. Uh, yeah, uh, collaboration is key, and uh, and yes, the, this change on Twitter uh, for researchers it was it will be, and I hope so. Well, I mean, help a lot for developing uh, research. I haven't used yet these new accesses, but I I read uh, some months ago, and uh, yes, it's uh, very good entry points. And especially to go back in time, right? The, the historical data set for me it was, yeah, the best, the best response Twitter could give give to researchers. Jana, mm -hmm. one thing that that always uh, surprises me was um, I've never heard, for example, about NetVis while I was in OSINT, right? Despite the fact that it's also an OSINT tool. And I never heard about the digital methods, summer school or winter school or all of that before I joined academia. And one of the things that um, coming from OSINT is that these two worlds that are so similar in terms of um, how they collect data like about the entire process you know about first you have the your your research question and then you will decide how you want to answer your research question and you will collect the data and you will analyze the data and the bias that we keep discussing also in these webcasts about how you have to you know talk discuss this because there is not an, a community well there's also curious of course but but there isn't like uh, academics have, have ethical boards and they have like uh, you have a supervisor for your research very often and OSINT researchers will have probably none of that so it's very important for us to keep you know kind of like a community standard for ethics and for questioning your own biases because very often you will collect data for example and you will tr get to a conclusion on for example, who's responsible behind an influence operation that's going on. And you will use a lot of like networks on Twitter, promoting in a hashtag, and you will say, okay, this is from here. But actually, maybe if someone else looked at that data, or if someone else collected 
other data, they will see it differently. Um, and what would, if from the from the little that you know about Ozint, but that you know a little bit already, how do you think that these two worlds could start? Because I know that among our listeners and viewers, there's a lot of young people who are so talented and they want to work, but maybe they can't like, they don't see an option in, for example, because they can't join in intelligence or law enforcement, but they're really good in finding things in social media and they would do, they would be amazing researchers or maybe supporting like a research lab. So how do you feel that these wor these worlds could, could get closer? Like how could we cooperate more? Like sharing tools, you maybe teaching us more about you know, ethics and about bias and methods. And probably we have a lot in terms of technical skills of making things happen to teach on your side. Yeah. yeah um, I know, I know not very little, not, not much as I should about all things, but um, I think this, this kind of um, bridging right, or connection can come from collaboration, right? Uh, as Lauren said, there are these environments called data sprints, which which I think, um, which I'm now on this week. So there is this, this Tomatoes Initiative, some schools, but also in Lisbon, uh, the, the Smart Data Sprint, which kind of maybe by still starting walking with his own um, um, foot. And, uh, and this type of environment, actually, I'd say that is one opportunity, right? To, to combine different uh, um, uh, people with different backgrounds, but also teaching, right? I know two colleagues of mine who are proposing these and, and this teaching connected to society and research at King's College, uh, Liliana Bonegru and Jonathan Gray. And, uh, and I, this is also maybe a kind of uh, another opportunity, for instance, you prepare yourself uh, in age at ISCTE for the next, I don't know, next year in the discipline that you're teaching. And then you maybe want to collaborate with an institution, right? And then, you grab the institution and your students and they are synced uh, students to come across a kind of projects and this is going to be the about the, the discipline. So, so you put everybody like kind of collaborating for a purpose. It may work. Uh, yeah, sounds, I think- Sounds really interesting. I think that, like, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not my idea so please you should like have a look <laughs> on uh, this this proposal actually it's Liliana Bonegru and Jonathan Gray right so these uh, um, research engaged leading approach so they are actually um, doing that so I participated of like this proposal this year uh, for two months at, at the, that King, so we did a kind of workshop with the digital journalism students, right? And then my group, let's say it was almost 30 students, uh, and we were studying this information related to, to climate change, but in a collaboration environment with um, DSMOG, right? Which is uh, uh, an institution that right exists to um, disclaim and bring awareness about um, uh, misinformation related to, to to climate change topics. So they have this this website, and so and and it worked. So the students kind of uh, prepared projects with digital methods, right, to study. Uh, using this mock database, so you know it's it's a mix. So it, it is teaching, it is um, it is doing methods, it is involving people out from the outside. But again, that, that was not my idea. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> but uh, I think a good idea we should we right? should share, right? A good idea yeah. we should always 
always share. I yeah, think. no, we do that a lot. Always giving attribution to those who who came up with the idea or the tool or whatever. You were going to ask something, Laurent. You know, it just gave me, you know, it gave me a lot of food for thoughts and um, spinning it further. And I, I think I quite like this idea of working with with uh, students because there are so many um, who like to. As, as you said, you know, they, they like to work in this environment. They want to work for maybe law enforcement, intelligence agency, or even as a journalist, but it's so difficult to find or to get into this area. And why not take those students and then also take academics who maybe want to learn some bit of OSINT, then take those who are really good at programming and can write Python scripts and understand all the technical technicalities of, you know, you need to have two servers and we can do this, this and that and bring them into a room. I think I quite like the idea. And then kind of like have a CTF, not, yeah, kind of like CTF slash hackathon, where you just say, this is the problem. Um, now give us presentation group it's A. The which data sprint. It's the same. It's so funny yeah. because, you know, digital yeah. methods has the data sprint, but it's exactly the same the hackathon. Yeah. than a hackathon. So it's, it's yeah. very similar. This is the, the funny part. Yeah. Yeah, we should keep this conversation alive. And uh, after the defense of my dissertation, we should get back and talk again yeah. <laughs> for the no, next no, uh, the next but, edition of the Smart Data Sprint. It was going yeah, to be no. what, what, number six. <laughs> what kind of what kind of if we if you had to name like five tools that you have in your computer or like do you go with your browser like five tools? You've mentioned Gephi. That's for sure one of them like if you had to mention five tools that you use like every month or every three months uh, that really help you in your research which ones would it be well i use gaff a lot right because i do uh work with networks spreadsheets spreadsheets <laughs> Gephi uh, is a free tool um if I, you I, I, Gephi, yeah, it's, it's, it's maybe not a tool, but a Google spreadsheet is kind of, or, a, or any type of spreadsheet, it's because I'm not a developer, right? And I do lots of visualization. I know how to extract data. I know to use uh, scripts, but I do not code and I do not uh, develop. Mm. Okay, so Gephi. I don't know if I have five tools in as it depends on the period of the time, but I mean, Gaffy Image Sorter, right? It's a uh, sorter. Have, know, are, what sorter. kind of tool are you using for the uh, uh, visual analysis? Because Wolfram oh, yeah. Alpha has a project, right? They have a really good project on that. Yeah, that's a good uh, Let me share with you then the name of the tools. One is called Mimi Spectre, right? Which was built by a colleague of mine called Jason Chow. Okay. And, and this Ooh. is the slide of our um, of our tutorial okay. this week. Mimi Spectre. Oh, yeah. Let me, yeah. Uh, this, this one serves to to use uh, to invoke vision can APIs. I, uh, Donna, can I share this? Or can I um, it's share public. my screen? If you, if you go to my okay. yes. Yeah. You can okay, let me just share. Yeah. Hopefully, it doesn't go I also wrong. placed Gephi. Uh, Gephi is not very well known in the OSINT community. Ben Du Brown does use it for uh, network analysis on bots on Twitter. Um, and and, and this other one. Yeah, uh, this one is the Mimi Spectre 2. It was a tutorial. Sorry, Nays, to interrupt you. It was no. a tutorial. Uh, yeah, to know how to use the tool. It's quite simple. It's to work with images, right? Okay. Um, and then we also shared uh, uh, recipes to use, which is based on, on my research, my current research at uh, wow. at Kaij. And the second one, it is helpful uh, to query specific collection of images, which is called Im uh, Offline Image and Extraction Tool. So, yeah. Cool. This is yeah. really good. Yeah, thanks for sharing. 
No, so all, all of are... this data that Jana is talking about and that this comes from the digital methods school, right? Um, they usually always put it, um, all the projects and all the conclusions of the projects, they put it online on their website. So if you go to the digital methods website, uh, you will usually find like presentations, you will find reports of the conclusions that will include the tools that were used. And you can use it like as a jumping start to find an idea for your own research, which would also be an, an, a question that I would have. We, our name is Ozin Curious because one of the things we feel that kind of like gets us all in the same boat is we are people, we are curious people. So... OSINT is a skill, but what makes you like like a, a good researcher is the fact that you look at something and go like, hmm, I think, oh, and then you go down the rabbit hole and you're like, you've lost four hours. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you, how does it, this process come with you? How do you choose like a research subject? Do you feel like sometimes it's just like in your daily life or how how are certain subjects or research ideas uh, worked and, and prepared by you? Oh dear, that's so difficult question. <laughs> I am super curious, super curious. So sometimes I just do things and exploratory studies because I am curious, I mean, not publish any. So I have a, a research blog in which I share a lot my thoughts uh, and everything that is there, um, most of the things that are there is because of the curiosity, right? And trying to understand but what guide my research actually, it's, it's not much, it's, it's not much a theme, right? Because I'm, I'm interested in understanding, um, the technicity of the platforms and software. So, and, and this is, this is, and understanding, yes, and understanding regimes of functioning, right? And understanding digital records and how all these um, beings can contribute or facilitate for research. So this is since ever my, my main goal. So, and this is kind of guides me. So for instance, um, for instance, I remember a few years ago when we could extract data from NetFees, right? And I was learning how to use Gephi and I was extracting data for those um, uh, connections, page-like connection. And that, but nowadays, mm -hmm. if, we, if you talk about that, I mean, it's quite simple, everybody's going to understand. But back then, it doesn't make sense to me, for instance, to apply all those metrics to this type of network because the data coming from Facebook, I mean, I know how the connections were made. So as I was trying to understand what does it mean degree, out degree. I know right now this, it means silly, right? Because one can say, okay, Facebook pages, connections, out degree, it is if a page like another. In degree, is if a page receive <laughs> likes. But you see, it th that's the good part of being curious because after you go through the whole habit, as you said, uh, Inej, things seems to be a pretty, yeah, what is the word, logic. Um, so, I'm not good in explaining these difficult questions. I mean, how can I? <laughs> no, but you explain really well, and I, I think it has a lot to do with 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 looking at I, my 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 biggest frustration is that I can't clone myself because I keep like going through the ideas and say, oh, this would be like so cool to write a paper on this, and this would be. There's like this world of data that's just you know there to for us to explore and to to analyze and and because I I can easily get get to it and analyze it it's even like makes it even more appealing and yeah that that that's an, a challenge because you you cannot do everything so you try to focus of course on on certain on certain areas that are more um, interesting than others but it's it's always a, a challenge yeah 
being curious could, could always also be kind of tricky, right? Because as you said, you cannot focus and then you, yes. and you start yes. here and then that, yeah. and we should be very aware about it uh, and maybe try to find something in common that something that we really like mm -hmm. and then remain on that yeah right and use your curiosity but what you really like is always here on the center so use your curiosity you go there but you always come back you go there but always come back always looking at um like the most interesting things for you that that's the way i see it actually and and how i but that's yeah. that's exactly also one of my biggest problems. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I love to be curious, and this is how I read about new stuff and get new ideas. Um, but I always have to stop myself. Like you can't learn everything because uh, ideally, I would love to become, you know, the cloud engineer, the architect, machine learning, AI specialist, and everything on top of it. But that's not possible. Um, but at least you know, I know that these things exist. I kind of like understand it. And if I really need it for something, I I have to just ask the expert, please help me. I have no idea about this. <laughs> but yeah, okay. it's always like that. Um, before we wrap up, um, I just wanted to show two things and then I have a last question for you. So um, we discussed, uh, we talked about the digital methods initiative. Um, so let me just share my uh, Chrome tab, first of all. So for our viewers, so this is the website. It's and for our listeners, it's wiki.digitalmethods.net. And then you can find more information about the Summer School 2021. They have also um, lots of tools that you may find interesting, um, especially the, the scraper for Twitter is absolutely fantastic, the MIT cat. Uh, I used it as well in the past. Um, so that's Digital Methods Initiative. Um, and we also mentioned uh, Gephi, and we also mentioned Ben. Um, in that regard, I just wanted to share this here. So Ben, um, he probably everyone knows about Ben, Benjamin Strick. Um, Can you change the, the screen? Okay. All right. Then let me just... I'm uh, just feeling sorry for screen. Ben. <laughs> yeah. Ben, we are with you. <laughs> Wait, I have to stop and now I have to do it again. No worries. Uh, fine. Yeah. Go so check out one. Ben's work, Jana. It's really interesting. So here in this post, so he's done a lot of case studies on uh, Gephi and Twitter network and um, visualizations. And this blog post specifically on his um, blog goes about how you can scrape and analyze Twitter networks. It goes really into depth of the research preparation, how you actually, what you have to prepare, how you can download this thing, and then how you find these networks and how you analyze it, how you capture it. So it's really uh, well written. And this is also something for you to check out. And while we are at it, um, Ben has also a YouTube channel where he goes into some cool OSINT stuff. So he talks a lot about the basics in OSINT, uh, geolocation, and lots of cool things. So just check out uh, the YouTube tutorials um, on here. So that were these two things that I just wanted to quickly share. Um, and also for our listeners, uh, yeah, no, that's it. <laughs> so let's get back to uh, Jana. So the final question we ask everyone is, um, what is the next thing you want to learn? We talked about curiosity, so what's next? <laughs> I, I want to learn Python to yeah. uh, not to much to do visualizations, but to do very basic stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, everything that I know how to do using spreadsheets, I just want, want to learn in Python because it's going to be like faster. So yes. Oh, that's, that's nice, Python. Know. Yeah, Python is a uh, really, uh, really good uh, programming language and uh, um, it's super useful for lots of things. I personally, um, I don't use it every single day, but I just like to build stuff. And I'm very happy if I have one uh, small script that does something funny and it's working, then I'm super happy. And <laughs> that's the <laughs> problem. I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah. All right, um, then uh, Shana, thank you so much for being our guest today and sharing um, all these really interesting uh, things and talking about your work. And um, last but not least, I just wanted to quickly also share uh, more information. So for our listeners and viewers, if you want to learn more about uh, Shana's work, here's the, the smart.com 
um, innovamedialab.org uh, website where you can find more information about those smart data sprints and uh, workshops and everything we talked about. Um, so go check this out. And yeah, so from our side or from my side, uh, thank you so much for being on this interview today. Oh, thank yes, you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for this invitation. Uh, I really enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to get to know more about all things curious, really. And to keep up with this conversation. Of, I, have, I think we have a lot of place where we can teach a lot to each other. So I think that the Ozin Curious members are really looking uh, at, you know, uh, making it more about like ethics and about all this method and bias. And we're all very interested in, in knowing more because we are aware of it, but not in terms of like scientific knowledge and, and those kinds of things um, and how the way or the tool you collect may interfere with your data set, all those concerns that are more usually connected to, to academic research. And on, on the other hand, like I'm not a I'm 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 not good at Python, but we have a lot of like really good <laughs> technical like capabilities and probably we know of tools that will make a lot of your research work a lot easier. So that would be it, Jan. It was a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, thank you so much. And we should keep continuing our conversation about the uh, hackathon slash CTF slash data sprint. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Definitely. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, bye everyone. Bye bye.